Today, thousands of young people took part in the March of the Living, from Auschwitz to Birkenau, the largest Jewish graveyard in the world, in honor of the six million Jews and millions of other innocent victims murdered in the Shoah in Europe. Throughout Europe, tens of thousands of Jews rose up to fight against the evil that had ensnared Europe. We now turn our attention to the story of Hugo Lowy and one act of spiritual resistance that took place only a few meters away from where we now stand, near the boxcar, on the spot to where so many Jews from all over Europe were forcibly transported never to return. In the last year of the war, more than 400,000 Hungarian Jews were marched to their death in Birkenau. Each and every one had a story, but their stories went with them to the gas chambers. Some 50 years later, one of these stories has miraculously come to light. Hugo Lowy is a story of a hero who was ready to sacrifice his life for his faith, for Judaism. Hugo Lowy was an ordinary husband and father. A modest but devout Jew, he prayed every morning. Like many, he worried about protecting his family from the Holocaust engulfing Europe. As whole families began to disappear, Hugo moved his wife and children from their hometown on the Slovakian border to the relative safety of Budapest. But their fragile world crumbled in March 1944 when the Nazis invaded. And the fear that gripped all of us of what's gonna happen to us was uh, kind of indescribable. It was all internal. Nobody screamed or cried, but the fear of what's gonna happen to us. The next day, Hugo went alone to the Budapest train station, hoping to find a way to get his family out. He was never seen again. Against the odds, Hugo's wife and children survived. In the months after liberation, they searched for him, but found nothing. It invaded the space of my mother's sorrow. And she was a gentle soul. She very rarely smiled. Hugo's wife died, never knowing what had befallen her husband. Then, in 1991, a chance meeting on the other side of the world brought a witness. Maya Lowy was no relation. But like Hugo, he'd gone to the Budapest train station on March 20, 1944. The two had been caught in a Nazi trap and taken to an internment camp outside the city. My father told me that Hugo was, uh, was kind of a leader. He was an, a real inspiration to the people that were there. He conducted the uh, prayer services, and so he encouraged everybody to, uh, to pray. Hugo's faith sustained them as they were herded into wagons, 
without food or water, the first transport of Hungarian Jews to the death camps. My father and Hugo were together. They get grabbed and thrown out onto the platform. And they were ordered to uh, take their belongings, to drop it at the station there. Everybody did, and he didn't. Hugo held on to his bag, and uh, an SS guard grabbed it from him and threw it on the pile. When the guard turned around, my father picked it up and brought it back. There were all these people who were looking up to him, and they were warning him, and, and my father also said to him, don't do it, just leave it, just leave the bag, just leave it. And my father told me that Hugo said, I'm not going anywhere without my prayer shawl and my tefillin. And then he knew, he had to have known you know, what the outcome would be. And then they beat him to death there and then. And the rest moved on. This was his life, the tradition, the heritage, the faith. He's belonging to the community of the Jewish nation. Was concentrated in those tefillin, in this bag. This makes him even more a model of Kedush Hashem, sanctification of God. Almost half a million Hungarian lives were erased from history under these grey skies. But it would take many years to find a monument to help mark this tragedy. An original wartime wagon, restored by Hugo's family, and returned here in a private ceremony. It is filled with the memories of all those it brought to this dark place and something more. Today we are going to return back the talents and svillin of his son. The Nazis didn't declare only a genocide against the Jewish people. They declared a war against the spirit as well. Hugo, Loi, in his brave last step, he overcame. We would now like to introduce Mr. Frank Lowy, Holocaust survivor and internationally known philanthropist and the son of the late Hugo Lowy to share his feelings with us at this time. A few months after my bar mitzvah, my father disappeared. We didn't know what had happened to him. In our apartment in Budapest, there was a couch under the window, and I would stand on it day after day. Looking into the street, watching, waiting for my father to appear. In a way, I waited for almost 50 years. In all that time, I never forgot him, even in my dreams. As I slept, I would feel him bending over me, and I would wake relieved that he was there. and then confused that he wasn't. I had this dream on and off for almost 50 years. I was only, it was only when my family found out what happened to him that the dream stopped. Once I knew what happened, I wanted to do something. I wanted to honor his memory. I wanted to stand in a place where he perished so I could feel him. So here I am with all of you in Birkenau. I know he was also here under the same sky, just like almost half a million 
Hungarian Jews, he came to this place in a wagon and almost immediately after arriving, disappeared into a smoke in the sky. I was 13 when I lost my father and now I'm 82 and you know, I still miss him. To the young people here today, I want to say that your mother and father always matter, even when you get to my age. And honoring your parents matters very much while they are alive and when they are no longer here with us. I still feel the loss of my father but as something I have gained. You see, there were things about him that I did not know. I knew he was a good man, a good father, a religious Jew who believed in God. He worked as a traveling salesman and he was a modest. I never realized that he had the strength, the spiritual strength to take on the brutal gods here in Birkenau. No matter how hard they hit him, he protected the sanctity of his talis and filling. They could break his body, but they could not break. But they could not break his spirit. The talit and the villain were part of him, part of his relationship with God, and he was ready to die for them. And he did. He did so in front of his people who knew what was in the bag and who tried to stop him from protecting it. In front of them, he fought for his faith with a spiritual courage I never knew he had. You see, my father was an ordinary man. Extraordinary things, <clears throat> people do extraordinary things if they have it in them in the first place. Well, he certainly did. Hugo's legacy lives on in four generations. Beside me, his grandsons and great-granddaughter represent them here today. Also here, here today, are two people who are important to my father's story. Alan Lowy, who you just saw in the film, the son of the late Meyer Lowy, who witnessed what happened to my father and told us the story. Meyer Lowy was not a relative. He was arrested with my father and we came very close to him. He lived to tell the story and Dr. Roland Huser from Germany, also here with us. We found the wagon that stands there at his museum and he gave it to us to restore and place it here in Birkenau. Three years ago, when the wagon was brought here, I had the privilege to, to place my own talus and fill-in in the wagon to replace those torn from my father's hands. This helps to heal the brokenness of the past. Some two centuries ago, Rabbi Nachman Breslev taught that if you believe the world can be broken, then you know that can it also be fixed. Fixing means understanding what happened, healing the pain, and building a better future. The Nazis wanted not only to destroy the physical presence of the Jewish people, but to wipe us out spiritually as well and leave no trace. But look at us here today. Perhaps all those Hungarian Jews, including my father who disappeared into this sky, are looking down on us today. They see how young, how strong, and how full of promise all you are. They see the plan to break the, the crush on us has made us stronger. 
throughout history, others have tried to destroy us, but, not, but none have succeeded. We are an eternal nation, bound together by our faith. Am Yisrael Chai. Torches will now be lit in memory of the victims of the Holocaust and in honor of those who resisted Nazi tyranny during these dark times. I would like to call by name the torchlighters and at the time of my calling their names, the theme from Schindler's List will be played. The mayor of Saloniki, Greece, Mr. Yanis Butaris, the Deputy Mayor, Mr. Hastai Kapon. Mrs. Tami Hausner Rave. Mr. Michael Miki Gilad. David, Peter, and Stephen Lowy. Ambassador Ronald Lauder. Phyllis Greenberg Heidemann. Vladimir Slutsky and Asher Oud. The fourth torch will be lit in memory of the six million Jews whose lives were taken from them in the Shoah, in memory of the millions of other innocent civilian victims of World War II, and in honor of the millions of soldiers and resistance fighters who gave their lives fighting for freedom. The torch will be lit by David, Peter, and Stephen Lowy, grandchildren of the late Hugo Lowy. The last torch will be lit in honor of the State of Israel, where the Jewish people were reborn from the ashes of the Holocaust. The torch will be lit by Lieutenant General Benjamin Benny Gantz, Chief of Staff of the IDF, accompanied by Mr. Asher Oud, a survivor of Auschwitz. We conclude the 2013 March of the Living Yom HaShoah ceremony with the singing of Anima Amin. Yeah.
Amen.